हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम एट सुधीर आई कोच अ चैनल फॉर बर्डिंग ऑफ थलमोलॉजिस्ट इन दिस वीडियो आई विल शेयर माय एक्सपीरियंसेस ऑफ परफॉर्मिंग फेक ओमल्सिफिकेशन इन माइक्रोस्पिरोपिक के पेशेंट माइक्रोस्पिरोपिकिया इज अ रेयर कंजेनेटल डिसऑर्डर वेयर क्रिस्टोनाइन लेंस हैज रिड्यूस्ड इक्वेटोरियल डायमीटर एंड द लेंस बिकम्स मोर स्पेरिकल विद इंक्रीज एंटीरो पोस्टीरियर डिस्टेंस फर्स्ट आई क्रिएटेड टू साइड पोर्ट इंसिडेंस एंड फिल्ड द एंटी चैम्बर विद हाई विस्कोसिटी विस्कोलास्टिक्स Because of the zonular laxity, uh, performing capsular access is always a, a difficult task. During the manipulation of capsule, we can have an idea regarding capsular behavior and zonular strength. I created a linear puncture in the capsule, and you can feel the behavior of capsule. Because of the laxity, propagation of capsular access was not normal. So I created the clear corneal mean. Um, incision with the capsular access forcep i started capsular access and with the second um, hand in instrument that was the iris repositor i stabilized the moving lens continuously i pressed the whole lens with the iris repositor and i continued to perform our access for better control on the capsular access i filled the chamber again with viscoelastic and again i continued here my idea was to leave a decent rim all around so that i can use the bag for the intraocular lens implantation as you all know that microsporopia is uh, mostly it is a bilateral problem and uh, the size of the lens is smaller and if we dilate the pupil you can see the equator of the lens Uh, there is associated abnormal laxity of uh, lens zonule fibers glaucoma is a common uh, complication and the most of the patients are highly myopic and uh, with the defective accommodation fortunately in this patient uh, there was no glaucoma associated but patient was having minus 22 diopters of uh, myopia since the patient was young there was no hard nucleus so i started aspirating nucleus with irrigation aspiration cannula i made all efforts to maintain the anti chamber pressure gradients because sudden change in anti chamber can enhance the uh, possibility of vitreous movement through the weak and lax zonules during cortical clean up all the time i was keenly observing any change in the shape of capsular access and equator equator of the lens bag sudden change in the shape of capsular access is always indicative of uh, capsular dehiscence here the posterior capsule was also loose and mobile so very carefully i continued cortical removal in younger age cortex fibers are strong and sticky so cortical clean up requires patience and it should be under proper visualization Finally I cleared all nuclear and uh, cortical matter and without any vitreous mobilization I used a hydrojet technique to remove the sticky uh, cortical fibers from the posterior capsule and finally I was through Finally I filled the whole bag with the high viscosity viscoelastics now i was ready to receive a intraocular lens but which implant to go before surgery i kept all options open after analyzing the size and stability of capsular bag i decided to implant hydrophobic intraocular lens implant in the bag but before loading the eyewell i decided to assess and compare the size of eyewell and the capsular size initially i thought to trim the size of haptics for better stability but after assessment i i decided to implant the eyewell without trimming microsporopia uh, is a genetic disorder and it can be associated with certain syndromes like weill marquesani syndrome marfan syndrome melfort syndrome and klinefelter syndrome so always uh, try to assess other symptoms also they are very important and you you have to take uh, systemic opinion for uh, those syndromes 
Finally, carefully I implanted the hydrophobic implant and tried to place it inside the bag. Although it was slightly difficult because of the less availability of the space in the bag, finally my implant was well set inside the bag. After arrival implantation always ensure it must be behind the iris diaphragm. Sometime because of the lax on use the whole capsular bag along with the eye will might come anteriorly. Gently I aspirated the viscoelastic from the chamber. Here I didn't go behind the eye will. I simply tapped the eye will to remove the visco behind the eye will. As I I withdrawn the eye tip, the whole of the capsular bag moved anteriorly. So I instilled pupil constrictor intracamerally, and I waited till the pupil covered the edge of the haptics and the bag. Before surgery, I kept multi-piece intraocular lens standby. to implant in the sulcus or if needed i could do scleral fixation also before closer i ensured the proper sealing of all incisions and pupillary constriction at the end i was happy to see the stable and well centered intraocular lens i always say every surgery is different and uh, i shared my experiences please share your opinion first post of the patient was very happy and the vision was unedited 69 thanks for watching